So acalabrutinib is a second generation BTK inhibitor. Um, it's a covalent inhibitor similar to ibrutinib. And so those drugs and all of the covalent BTK inhibitors will share the same binding site in BTK at cysteine 481. So we knew that with ibrutinib, most patients relapse by acquiring mutations in BTK at the binding site, primarily their cysteine to serine mutations at position 481. And we also have seen with ibrutinib various mutations in PLC gamma 2, which is the immediate downstream target of BTK. So we looked at our institutional population of acalabrutinib-treated patients to see what the patterns were of resistance in these patients and whether those mechanisms were similar to what we had previously observed with ibrutinib. So basically, we had 105 patients that we included in our analysis. Um, they were split between patients who were treatment naive, relapsed to refractory, who had not been exposed to a prior BTK inhibitor, and patients that were previously intolerant of ibrutinib. Um, we found overall patients did very well. Our median follow-up was almost four years, and 74 of our 105 patients remained on therapy at that time. And with that time period, 17 patients relapsed, 16 patients relapsed with CLL, and one relapsed with, with Richter's transformation. Um, when we looked at the patients who relapsed, in all 16, we were able to evaluate whether they had BTK mutations, and 11 of them I'm sorry, in 14 of them, we were also able to see whether they had mutations in PLC gamma 2. And basically, we saw that 69% of patients had mutations in BTK at the cysteine position. Um, a couple patients also had concomitant PLC gamma 2 mutations. We didn't see anybody who had only PLC gamma 2 mutations, though. So the rate of mutations in the relapse patients is relatively high. We also saw, similar to ibrutinib, that we could actually detect those mutations prospectively with a median of 12 months between when we could first detect the mutation and when the patient subsequently relapsed. Um, finally, we saw that patients who were intolerant to ibrutinib that switched to a calibrutinib um, initially looked like they had a shorter time to mutation detection and shorter time to progression. When we account for their entire length of time on a BTK inhibitor, um, they, it's not statistically different, though it does visually look like those patients have a little bit higher chance of relapse.